How to make old film grain completely from scratch in After Effects using nothing but a solid layer. Let's get into it. In After Effects, make a new composition. You can make it whatever you want. First thing you're going to want to do is do layer new solid. You're going to want to make this solid black. Now I'm going to make another solid right now and make it white just so we can have it as the background and I can see what I'm doing. This white solid will be deleted later. It will not be in the final thing. I'm just going to use it so I can actually see what I'm doing. It'll be a lot clearer and it'll make more sense in just a minute here. So you're going to want to go to effect simulation and CC ball action. This is where we're going to start. First, what you're going to want to do is put the scatter all the way up. Then I'm going to change the grid spacing to two but I'm gonna change the ball size to something like 20, maybe even 15, we'll see. So to actually get this move around in a random kind of way, click this button right here to add a keyframe for its rotation and add another keyframe for its twist angle. And I'm gonna to go to the end of my five seconds and I'm gonna change this to something like four and something like three. But when you hit play, you'll see it starts to do this. So now that we have this animation, I'm gonna add one more effect. I'm gonna go to Effect, Distort, and Wave Warp. And in Wave Warp, I'm gonna change the wave type from Sine to Noise. And I'm gonna change the wave height from 10 to 5. And what that's gonna do is if you look closely, it's just gonna make all of the circles not so circular. So when you play it, it just doesn't look quite as uh, formulaic, I guess. Step two is adding the hair or scratches sort of look. So what you're gonna wanna do is duplicate this first solid, and then you're gonna scrub through until you find a frame where there's, yeah, like this frame, where there's some fairly big spots so you can see it a lot better. Then you're gonna add an effect, distort, turbulent displace, and then you're just gonna mess with the amount. You can mess with the other settings, but I feel like you only need to mess with the amount. And I'm just gonna crank it up a little bit until you kind of get this hair-like fracture. I'm not gonna do it so much that it starts to look super crazy, but I'm gonna mess with it at least a little bit. And then when you play it back, now you've got some hair strands. And what's nice about this too is if you don't like your look, you can continue messing with it until you get something that you like. But yeah, so this is kind of the main effect. Now the bonus step here is getting that old film projector look, you know, the line that you see a lot when you look at old stock footage or overlays or even just old films, you always see like a couple lines that just kind of blink every now and then. There's probably way easier ways of doing this, but I'm going to show you the way that I came up with. First, you're going to want some sort of footage. It can literally be any sort of footage. This is where I'm lying about what I said earlier. If you want to do this step, you can't really easily do it with just a solid layer, but this is the bonus step, so who cares? But you just want to take any sort of footage that has a lot going on. Don't take a one minute video of your wall that has absolutely nothing on it. That's not going to fly. You need a uh, footage with a lot of stuff happening, but it doesn't matter what the footage is because I'm going to show you what we do with it to make it uh, turn into that line. So what I'm going to use is this halo clip, just some random halo clip. Cause I, as you know, play a lot of halo and I'm going to immediately go to time, time stretch, and I'm going to make it 15. Now, the timing in which you speed up your clip is very dependent on what clip you're using. But basically you want to speed it up so it kind of has roughly the same speed as the film grain that you've already made. So if you kind of play this through and then you disable this, you can kind of see this might even be moving faster than the clip, but you can kind of see that same sort of sense of speed and motion when it comes to this. So that's why you just want a lot going on and you want at least enough footage to speed it up to kind of match the film grain that you've already made. So the first effect you're gonna add to this is under stylize threshold. And you're gonna wanna change this until there's not a ton of stuff going on in the frame. And then what you're gonna wanna do is add a mosaic effect under stylize. And this may look kind of weird. This may not make sense at first. That's what your clip should be looking like, more or less. Next effect you're gonna add is a fine edges, also under stylize. And then you'll see you get these kind of black outline boxes that show up every now and then. And that's because the fine edges will make outlines of whatever your original clip is. But since you added the threshold and the mosaic, it's doing these box shapes. But you can manipulate the mosaic to work in your favor to make these lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the vertical blocks 
and put it to one. Now you can already see that we've pretty much got the effect. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the horizontal blocks from 10 to something like, I don't know, 20 maybe? just so it's a little more all over the place. And this is something that you're gonna have to mess with quite a bit to get your exact desired look. So for example, for this, there's just a too many lines going on. So I'm gonna change it back to 11. And even that's a little much, maybe I'll change it to like six something like that. Yeah, six looks pretty good. So yeah, it's not perfect. You can't make it super exact and procedural, but this is a way to kind of do it quick and dirty. So now that we have this effect, one thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go to mosaic and click on this box for sharp colors. Now it's gonna make the line a little more noticeable, which we might not want, but the reason why we need to do it is because as you can see, the screen is still completely white minus this line. We have completely lost sight of the rest of the film grain look. So there's two ways of getting around this. First, you can go to blending mode and change this to multiply and that will do the trick. But one thing I wanna do at the end of this is combine all three of these layers together in a composition and messing with the blending mode of one of the layers might mess with the entire thing once you put them together. So the other thing you can do is you can add a keying extract. And since the values here are pretty much black and white, you could just move the white point ever so slightly and now it's gone. Now the rest of it shows up and you can still see the black lines here and there. And you can still mess with this, giving it more lines if you want. But what I noticed was when the colors weren't sharp, you can see more of the lines, but when you add it to a different layer, the lines turn white. And I don't know if that's a problem with my PC or with this, but if you can figure a way of doing this exact thing without the sharp colors checked on, please let me know. But for the way I did it, I was not able to get it to work perfectly without enabling sharp colors. One thing I forgot to mention with the second layer with the hairs and scratches is go to the first frame and just mess with the rotation and twist angle and just change some of the outputs at the very beginning, just so it's not going the exact same length and speed as the first layer, just to add a little bit more randomness. So it kind of works together a little better. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we can also now delete this white solid because we really only needed it to see what we were doing. But now that we deleted it, now it's pretty much just the alpha channel in the background. So to show that this works well, I'm gonna bring in that halo clip that I used at the very beginning. I'm gonna bring it to the bottom and now you can see film grain works on top of it. And what you can do with that is you can take these three layers now, pre-compose it into old film grain. But if you wanted to change the color or something like that, you could either do something like channel invert, and now everything here is white, or you could also do generate fill, and you could change all of this to whatever color you want. And there you go, that's how you make this old film grain effect. What's great about this is if you don't want the line at least, you can do this without using any outside sources. You can make this specifically within After Effects completely from scratch. And what's nice is you can always go back and alter it any way you want to get the exact desired look that you were hoping for. So thank you guys for watching. Please comment down below if you have any other ideas for future tutorials that you want me to do. Like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.